So we're going to write the formula for average value, but we're not going to actually do an example that uses average value. So average value of f over d It's most likely going to be a function of x and y. Oh, now it'll be a function of three variables, f of x, y, and z over the three-dimensional region D. So we're going to get the total function value, so the integral of F dV over the region D divided by the volume of the region D. This should look really similar to the average value over a region, two-dimensional region. The only difference is you're dividing by the area. So it's the standard way you measure that region. In this case, three dimensions of volume. So it's going to be just the integral of one in the denominator, just like the area was. So the only difference is your function versus one. That's all. Of course, that bottom is the volume. So we're going to do one more example. And this will be our last example. This is number 25 in the exercises. And we're going to find the volume of region enclosed by y plus e equals 2, and x equals 4 minus y squared, and the first octant. So we talked about the first octant before. That's your positive x, y, and z coordinates. It's you're going to see it overrepresented in graphing because it's easier to graph if you're just using the positive axes. So you're going to see it show up more than maybe the first quadrant would before. What type of a graph will y plus z equal 2 make? So it's a linear equation. So what kind of, uh, what will the graph look like? Will it be a line or a plane? plane. You're looking at a plane. So another way to think about it, every equation you're looking at drops the dimension by one. So we're in three dimensions, so e both of these equations are going to be a two-dimensional graph. So we got a plane on the left. What kind of shape will that make? If you didn't have a z-coordinate, what would you say? So it would be a parabola. And it's going to open sideways because our y squared, not our x. And there's going to be some uh, shift. And then there's a negative. So there's two transformations on it. Now that we don't have a z coordinate, what that means is z can be anything. Could be 0, could be 1, could be 2, or any number at all. So what that's going to look like, we have a parabola. Now there's a z coordinate. And so it's going to look. like this. So it will look like a parabola that shifted along the z-axis. That will happen to be uh, perpendicular to how it's drawn. So it's basically a, you could think of it, uh, a fancy airplane hanger. Well, it's probably not fancy, but an airplane hanger has this type of shape. Um, I don't know what else has this kind of shape off the top of my head, but that's the only thing I've really seen that has this kind of shape right here but it's going to be that parabola shape, but just translated or shifted over in the z direction. All right, so we're going to do our best to graph these. <clears throat> so we only need the positive x, y, and z axis. So y plus e equals 2. Let's graph this with our x-coordinate being 0. 
So we're graphing a plane, but I'm fixing the x coordinate to be zero. I'm just worrying about the plane first. So when y is two, z is zero. So we have that point, and then when z is two, y is zero. So we have that point. So I connect those with the line. Now we're graphing a plane here. So the line I drew is contained in the plane. The reason I cut it off at the y and z axis is because we're in the first octant. So I'm not, we're not going to use any part of this that goes outside the first octant. So we don't need those parts. All right, this plane did not have a z coordinate. So what that means is z could be anything. So we're going to take this line and we're going to move it over. We're going to move it in the z direction. So what that means is we can draw two parallel lines to the z axis and then do your best to make another parallel line to your original one. So this plane, I drew these parallel with the x-axis. I'm going to erase these green lines in a minute, but those green lines right there would correspond to those two green lines there. So we're basically two over and two up on the z-axis there. <coughs> All right, so we graphed a plane. Now we're going to graph the parabola. x equals 4 minus y squared. So it's negative y squared plus 4. That's the way that I would normally write my parabola. The only difference is my x and y are trading places. All right, we have a... I could use some points and use a clueless method. So if I just had x equals negative y squared, here we have y and x going this direction. So I want to use the origin and then, let's see, we're gonna go in the negative x-axis so my parabola would be graphed like this right here. So this is going to be a sad parabola, so it's going down a negative axis, and it's going not up or down the y-axis, but it's going down the z-axis, or I should say on the negative z-axis. Now I have to apply the shift plus 4. So what will that plus 4 do? So I'll just do a little bit of algebra, move it over that four. So when y is zero, x will be four. So I'm doing basically plotting a point. So when y is zero, x is four. If y is plus or minus one, x would be four. So that's negative one, x would be three. So I'll get two more points right here. So I'm just using, not the full clueless method, but I know it's parabola. If I plot three points, I can draw my parabola. So there we go. That's the actual parabola. I'll erase the original, because that doesn't have the shift in it. So I'm gonna keep going with the green marker here. So I'm gonna go two down the x-axis. So right there I have a point. How would I figure out the y-intercept? That's probably the first thing I told you in pre-calculus one. Set x equal to zero. So when x is zero, y is plus or minus 2. 
So you should be able to tell right from that equation at the top of the board, x is 0. Then negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So y squared is 4. And y is plus or minus 2. Question. Shouldn't on the x-axis it be at x equals 4? It definitely should be at x equals 4. So we'll be way out there. All right. So now our y-intercept. Why do I skip the negative 2 y-intercept? It's not in the first octet. It's not in the first octet. So I'm not going to do any of the left half of this parabola, only the right half. And I'm also not going to draw any of the parabola going past Obviously, the parabola goes past the y-axis and keeps going. I'm not using any of that. What did I assume the z-coordinate was for the curve I drew? So I assumed it was 0. So what we need to do, there is no z-coordinate specified, so z can be anything. Could be 0, could be 1, could be 2, anything in between. So we're going to take this curve here, and we're going to slide it up the z-axis. So we're going to translate this curve up the z-axis. I think z equals 2 is a good point to choose because that's going to be our intersection point right there. And then I'm going to draw the exact same curve ending 2 higher than my original. So I'm taking my point down there and moving it up 2. Now I'm intentionally using two different colors so that I can tell them apart. You're going to see the graphing utility uses two different colors also. Probably not the colors I chose. All right, there's supposed to be a region bounded by all these. So it looks like it's a little bit tricky to tell it's going to be under the plane. Well, it's not over the plane because that's infinite right there. So it's going to be under the plane. Now, under the plane, if I didn't have the green at all, get the green out for a second, this would be an infinitely long. Oops. I can't erase them because then I won't be able to redo them if I do anything else. If I don't have this green, this triangular shape prism is going to keep going out forever. So I need something to cut it off. What cuts it off is the green curve here. It doesn't cut it off at a nice 90 degree uh, right angle. So it cuts it off of this weird curve. So that's going to be where things are a little bit tricky. So we're going to have to figure that out. Let's go with, we're going to have to choose uh, which axis to do first, either dx, dy, or dz. How did we decide that before? We really did off the equations. So find a variable that's easy to solve for in both equations. So I'm going to say not y. I think that's the only variable that's not easy to solve for here. If I go with, uh, so we're not going to choose y. So y will be up later. So we're not going to go dy first. Let's think about going, if, what would be good if I went with dx? So I think one thing that would be good if I went with dx, I would get a very obvious, right here, uh, compaction or projection onto the z y, uh, zx plane. If I compact my x-axis down, I get a very nice triangle right there. And all I would need is an upper bound, a big X. In this case, that would be the one furthest out of the board, coming out of the board. So I want my biggest Z <coughs> and my smallest, oof, biggest Z, my biggest X comes out of the board. What is the smallest X? Zero. Zero. So that's really nice too. So DX seems decent. The only thing I'm a little worried about is what is the big X? Because it's most likely going to be on the curve.
But look at the way the curve's set up. Can I write x as a function of y? Right, it's already a function of y. So that looks very convenient. So my initial thought is dx is good. So let's shift and think about what if I went dz first? I would need a big function of z and a little function of z. What is the little function of z? In this case, it will be on the bottom, zero. What about the big function of z? Well, if it was two, I'd have a flat, that's not the best. I would need a flat top to this shape, which I don't have. Even without that funky parabola curve, I don't have a flat top to this. I think here's where we run into problems because some parts look like it might be the plane and some parts may be bounded by the parabola. So I think it's going to get a little bit more complicated here. So I'm going to go with dx as my first variable. And again, the reason in the dx that I don't need to worry about the big, uh, the reason it's just the parabola that's going to bound us, if you think about the big x, if I don't have a parabola, is there a big, a maximum x? Nope, it would be infinity. So the only thing bounding x is the parabola. So I can be sure about that. Whereas if I wanted to go dz, I need a little bit more information to figure out what my big z is. I think it would be the plane, but I would need to be a little bit more careful. Actually, I think it definitely would be the plane because if you don't have the plane, the parabola goes up forever. So if we erase the plane, that parabola will go up forever. So the only thing bounding our z would be the plane. All right, but I'm already committed to dx, so we're gonna go that direction. So our triple integral, we're finding volume, so we're putting a one. The only uh, variable we've determined is x is going first. And we already said x equals 0 is the little. And x equals 4 minus y squared is the big. All right, once you've done your first, you have to decide what is next. So we have to decide, we're going to compact the x-axis down to nothing. So we're going to project this down. And I've already drawn that little rectangle or little triangle, so we're just going to redraw it and write the equation for it. So I think from here it should be pretty clear, and we're also out of time. So you're going to go 0 to 2 on one of the variables. It doesn't matter if it's x or y because you're going 0 to 2, 0 to 2 on both. It only makes a difference do you solve for y or do you solve for z. And it should be just as easy to go either direction right there. And I think we did a triangle before. And you can look back on that one. Since, right. since we have, uh, when, since the x equals 4 minus y squared, when we integrate that, do I get that? then would it make sense to do the y next? Well, then you plug in the y, and then get z plus, and then get z, just plug in first. Yeah, I'm not sure that it really matters too much which one you go. You are going to have a y. Your y antiderivative will be harder than yeah. your x antiderivative, but neither of them should be that hard. So I don't think it'll matter which way you go. Oh, I, I see. Is the final set of 